Здравствуйте, товарищи. Welcome back to Russian Through Propaganda. Today is day 76, and we're introducing something a bit new today, verbs of conveyance. So basically, these are verbs for taking things places, taking things or people places. And in Russian, there are three basic ways to do that. Uh, carrying, like under your own power, you're literally carrying something. That's number one. Number two is we could say conveyance or taking by vehicle, right? So driving someone somewhere, you know, shipping something somewhere, anything involving a vehicle. And number three is basically leading, right? So leading could mean, for example, leading an animal by a bridle or a dog by a leash, you know, some kind of literal leading or taking a person somewhere, assuming you're not carrying them or taking them by vehicle, right? So you're going somewhere on foot. You could say things like, I took my friends to the theater. That would be a leading verb in Russian. Uh, so speaking of leading, uh, look at this poster. Упорство и труд к успеху ведут. Determination and labor lead to success or towards success. So this verb here, vidut, that means to be underway leading. They lead. And the idea here is that these your your work and your determination are leading you somewhere, namely to success. So that is a determinate form of this verb of conveyance. And that already gives us a clue that, uh, right, we're speaking of indeterminate, determinate, and so forth. Verbs of, con- verbs of conveyance are verbs of motion, right? Uh, they work exactly like the verbs of motion we just reviewed. And we know uh, very well by now that verbs of motion are very tricky, very complicated in Russian. But we've already learned uh, more or less everything there is to know about unprefixed verbs of motion, right? Now, uh, soon we're going to add prefixed verb of motion. That's verbs of motion. That's going to be something different. And thankfully, they're going to be actually quite a bit easier than these unprefixed forms. Okay, so uh, when we think unprefixed verbs of motion, or today, uh, more specifically, verbs of conveyance, the trick is, as we know, we've got three infinitives to worry about. And uh, so, in a nutshell, on one page 121, right, we see, uh, let's let's look at two, the two basic verbs of motion, right? That's motion by foot. That's motion by vehicle. And we have two imperfective forms, right? One indeterminate, one determinate. And then we have the one perfective form. So three infinitives total for every basic kind of motion. Now, today we're adding, again, the three basic uh, forms of conveyance, right? Instead of moving ourselves, we're we're moving something else. We're taking something else somewhere. And you see that the first two really, uh, they correspond to motion by foot, right? If you're going by foot, You can take things either by carrying it or by leading, usually a person, right, or an animal or something. Okay, so the three infinitives for taking, uh, carrying are nasit, nisti, ponisti. The verb, the three infinitives for leading are vadit, visti, povisti. And then the one verb corresponding to going by vehicle, right, instead of going, we're taking something by vehicle, that would be vazit, visti, povisti. So again, that can mean any number of things, driving someone somewhere, shipping something, you know, hauling something somewhere by vehicle or whatever the case may be. Okay, now looking over these uh, sets of infinitives, you may notice that we we have some rather unusual uh, verb types. And uh, these are some important types, but we haven't, uh, I don't think we've seen a single example of these, uh, if memory serves. So we're going to have to look carefully at how how to conjugate these. Uh, but first, let's look at just the basic meanings of these verbs. Again, we've already co- sort of been over it. Nasitnisti, uh, panisti, we would think literally of that as meaning carrying, right? You're going by foot, you're carrying something in your hands, your arms, under your own power, right? So, for example, ananisio chimadana vagzal. She's on her way to the train station. She's carrying a, a suitcase. That's the determinate uh, motion verb there. Now, uh, uh, an indeterminate example, well, sorry, uh, right, we, nasit is, of course, the indeterminate form of this verb for carrying, and it has a one sp- uh, additional specific meaning, namely to wear clothes. Uh, and if you th- we think about this, it makes good sense, right? What do you do with the shirt all day? Well, you carry it around on your person, right? You're going around on foot, and everywhere you go, you're carrying, so to speak, your clothing on you. Right, so again, this is just one one specific meaning of this. What kind of clothing do people usually wear in winter? Okay, again, that's indeterminate only. 
And then some of these will have a kind of a figurative sense, uh, for example, to bear, to bring, right? It's not necessarily carrying in a literal physical sense, but for example, right? What, is the fu- what does the future bear? What is the future bringing for us or to us, right? Now, the second example, second verb, vaidit visti povisti, again, literally that means leading. That's the most basic meaning of the verb. We could also think of it as guiding or whatever. Sergei Dolgovai Dilga Stepa Moskvia. That's an indeterminate verb, right? Sergei for a long time. Dolga, he was guiding or leading guests around Moscow. Now, again, a, an additional meaning, Vaidit, means to drive, right? So you're steering, you're guiding a car around. Uh, it's indeterminate, right? Because it refers to the activity itself. Uh, so, for example, to the umiesh vaidit machinu, are you able? Do you know how to uh, drive a car? And finally, figuratively, uh, these can mean to conduct or to lead. Uh, usually, this this would appear in the uh, determinate determinate form from visti. For example, kto vidyota ti pirgavori. In English, we could say who's leading the negotiations, or again, sort of more figuratively, we get this Latin derived verb conduct, right? Kind of a fancier way of saying the same thing. It's from the Latin ducere, I believe, which means to lead, right? So who's, who's leading, who's uh, conducting the negotiations? We use visti. Uh, okay, finally, visit visti. But visti means to convey by vehicle, right? To take by vehicle. Uh, for example, on vizyot minyan na vagzal na mashinye. He's, that's determinate, right? He's on his way, we're on our way. He's driving me to the train station in his car, by car. Uh, okay, so those are the basic meanings. And again, we see how the three, the, these three have very simple meanings, to carry, to lead, to take by vehicle. And then in some cases, we may get additional meanings based on the context. Um now, uh, again, we have to be careful. Are we talking about uh, uh, motion by foot or, by the way, just basic in-town motion? Or are we talking about a real journey where a vehicle is clearly involved? Uh, so, for example, Okay, we have two mistakes here, and both are, are due to the fact that we're talking about motion by foot when we're clearly talking about a trip to Russia, which necessarily implies a vehicle. Right, so this is incorrect. It should be right? I'm traveling to Russia by vehicle. Of course, we could also say I'm flying, but you know, the point remains the, the point is we can't use a motion by foot verb for this. And for that reason, we 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 would not say Since we're since a vehicle is involved, we should say right? I'm bringing these things by vehicle, which could include a plane, by the way. This confuses some people because uh they think, well, I may be on an airplane or whatever, but I'm carrying the, you know, I'm carrying the presents in my luggage or whatever. So I'm not, I'm not pulling them, pulling the presents in a wagon or something. But again, the point remains that these are being conveyed by vehicle on an actual journey. You're not just carrying it on a, on a, on a journey by foot. Okay, so let's do a simple exercise and just try to pick the correct infinitive. And again, we're using the same criteria we would for the verbs of motion we reviewed yesterday. Uh, so, why are you carrying the suitcase around? Okay, carrying, we have this key word around, right? It looks pretty clearly like this will be nasit. Nasit is the verb we would use. Again, for now, let's just pick the infinitives. I'm taking the suitcase to the train station. Okay, we're on our way somewhere here, right? We're underway. That's our key word for, uh, right, a determinate verb, uh, a determinate form of carrying. That would be nisti. Nisti. Number three, this one is a little bit tricky. I'll take it there for you. Okay, we can think of this maybe as a, as a one-time future trip, right? Again, you can think of these verbs of conveyance by analogy to just motion verbs, right? Uh, it sounds like um, we're going to the train station, and uh, right, which would be an in-town trip, right? There's no mention here specifically of, of a vehicle, and we've been talking about carrying. And so this would be the equivalent of like paiti, ya paidu, Right, I'll go to the train station, and as I go there, I'll carry your suitcase. So that would line up with uh, the perfective form, uh, punisu, right? We would use the form punisti, punisti. And we could visualize that as, uh, you know, like if we, if we say, if we use paiti, that means to set out on foot, right? Uh, punisti means literally to set out carrying, 
right? You're setting off and you're carrying something instead of simply walking. So anyway, that would, anyway, that would be punisti. That's a little bit uh, tricky, but try to visualize it and, and think about what the verb literally means. Okay, number four, he delivers pizzas by car. Now we're talking about vehicle, uh, right? Conveying, conveyance by vehicle. This would be vizit, right? Because this is just a general activity. He delivers pizzas. Well, he delivers them all over town repeatedly, multiple trips. That'll be vizit. Where was he delivering that pizza? Well, that sounds like a one-way trip, right? We saw him drive by. I wonder where he was driving the pizza to. So that'll be visti, visti. And number three, uh, I took a friend to the theater yesterday. Okay, let's think about that one. That will be a completed round trip in the past, right? You went to the theater, you came back. So the verb of motion would be chadit, but here we're taking a friend with us. We're not carrying him, and it doesn't sound like we're driving him. At least that's not specified. So we would say vadit, vadit, right? In the sense of ya vadil druga, I, I completed a round trip by leading, we might say. I led a friend to the theater and back. Okay, so let's review more carefully uh, these different forms. Let's start with indeterminates. Um, and again, we need to really pay attention here to how to conjugate these verbs. Now, the indeterminates aren't tricky. They're just e-verbs, right? So we get the same mutations we would expect. Nashu, noisish, noisit, etc. Vadit, vaju, vojish, vojit. These are all shifting stress verbs. And for vazit, to take by vehicle, vaju, voizish, voizit, etc. Now, you may notice there is, uh, just by coincidence, right, vaju, uh, that, that, ya, that, that ya form coincides, right? So vaju could mean I am leading around or I am taking by vehicle around, right? Okay, let's revisit uh, breakdown number four, right? Uh, this is the strongly implied round trips. And this is even a little bit weirder when we introduce uh, verbs of conveyance than it was back when we were just talking about verbs of simple verbs of motion. Uh, let's see why, right? So uh, to take an example, I often drive my friend to the airport in my car, literally on my car. Or I often drive my friend to the airport. Okay, so I'm, I often drive my friend to the airport. I often carry medicine to grandma. Okay, if we think about this situation very literally, then this is really crystal clear, right? Because we're taking someone somewhere and leaving them there. We're dropping the friend off at the airport. We're dropping the medicine off at grandma's. And so when we leave those places to complete our round trip, we don't carry or drive the things with us. Right, so logically, this is very clearly a repeated one-way trip, right? Repeated one-way trips. I drive my friend to the airport, I take medicine to grandma's, etc. But, again, because of breakdown number four, you know, in terms of the, the person, the speaker's motion here, they're returning back home. This is clearly a, a round trip that's implied, even though maybe not, uh, you know, explicitly stated. And, again, because that idea of the round trip tends to take over, we end up saying things in Russian or hearing things like "Я часто вожу друга в аэропорт на своей машине." I often drive my friend to the airport. Again, this uh, this 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 um, indeterminate verb, this repeated round trip verb, really applies more to the motion of the speaker than it does to the conveyance of the friend, right? So there's again there's a sense in which this is sort of illogical. But, you know, uh, sort of zooming out, you can see why this uh, would be a strong tendency. Or the second example, Ya chaste nashu babushki likarstva, I often take medicine to grandma. Again, this, this use of nasit here is uh, pointing to the multiple round trips taken by the person who's, who's doing the carrying. All right, so that's a little detail, right? By the way, speaking of carrying, Nya nasi butilyi, don't carry around giant bottles of acid without corks. Very sound advice. Okay, um, let's see. Let's, so let's just use the correct forms of the indeterminate verbs. Когда я ездил в Россию, он blank с собой много багажа. Когда он ездил в Россию. Okay, so when he would make round trips to Russia, past tense, right? He used to make round trips to Russia. When he did so, he took a lot of baggage with him. Okay, now this is the one we have to watch out for a little bit because even if this is like carry-on luggage, right, it, it, it's still being taken by a vehicle, by airplane or a train or whatever. So we need vizit, 
right? On vaisil saboy mnoga bagaja. Uh, number two, moi ruski drug lubit blank minya par maskvia par maskvia pishkom. Okay, it sounds like he likes to show us around Moscow, right? And this is just the general activity, right? We're and also we're going around Moscow, seeing the sights. That's going to be vaidit on lubit vaidit minya par maskvia, leading me around, so to speak, taking me around Moscow. Number three, vprosim gadu kada ja jezdu k nimu v gosti on minya blank v teater. Okay, I guess this is a continuation of number two. Uh, he took me to the theater. Okay, this is a completed one, uh, a one-time round trip, a completed single round trip. He took me to the theater. He led me there, and he led me home. Presumably, on me nja vajdjil v teater. Chitirje, why is he dragging this heavy suitcase around the city? Почему он носит этот тяжелый чемодан по городу, right? Why is he carrying it around all over the city, right? По городу. Number five, uh, у нее машина. She has a car. Uh, she often drives me to the train station. Она часто возит меня на вокзал. There is the breakdown number four example, right? Logically, we might expect визьот, and we could say that, but the tendency generally would probably be to use uh voice it because she drives us there and then she drives home again, right? Repeated round trips. Okay, now what about determinate forms? Now these are tricky in terms of conjugation. These are called obstruents. And if you look for them on the on the verb table, they're at the very bottom of the table. And there are different sort of subtypes of obstruent. Uh, for example, an S obstruent, a D obstruent like visti, and a Z obstruent like visti. And if we take a look at this, these aren't really that hard to conjugate in the present, right? We just need, as usual, to recover our stem, which ends in the consonant that's in the verb tag, right? So, nisti, the stem is nies, right? Nisu, nisyosh, we just add the ye, the your endings. Nisu, nisyosh, nisyot, nisyom, nisyot, nisut. Uh, look over at visti, right? That's a de obstruent. We get vidu, vidyosh, vidyot. And visti with the z, vizu, viziosh, viziot. Again, we would unpack these as I am underway carrying, right? I'm on my way somewhere carrying or leading or driving or, you know, taking by vehicle. Okay, now watch for the past tense forms of these, right? These are also kind of unusual in the sense that we can't get them straight from the infinitive. Um, again, we're really working here with the stem, uh, at least in most cases, right? So nios. Okay, we get, we see we're getting a yo pop up here, but it's still basically just the stem of the verb. Nyes, nyos. And note that in the masculine form, the L has dropped out, right? It, originally, it would have been there. It would have been nyosol or actually nyesol back in the day when there was no yo. But anyway, in Russian, that, that L has dropped off the masculine simply because it's kind of inconvenient to say it. So people just stop saying it, basically. But when we add our vowel markers, uh, our like the, our feminine marker, our uh, plural marker, and so forth, the L does reappear, and we get nisla, nislo, nisli. Jump over and look at the vehicle verb, vios, vizla, vizlo, vizli, right, the same pattern. Now, with the middle one to lead, we get something a little bit unusual. Instead of the, the L dropping out of this form, the de has dropped out. So I would be sure and circle this and note that it's not a typo, right? This is correct. It's viol instead of what we might expect, namely viod, viod, right? That would be the normal pattern, but it's not what we get here. And just for phonetic reasons, it was the de that dropped out instead of the l. And so we get vila, vilo, vili. So no, no de anywhere in these plural forms. Be sure and circle those and uh, learn them. Okay, let's give a few present tense forms of these, uh, just to practice present tense conjugation. We're bringing beer and they're bringing wine, right? So we're, we're on our way somewhere and we're carrying with us wine and beer. Okay, now we're leading. The soldier is leading the horse by the, sorry, through the field. Right, he's on his way. They're on their way across the field and he's leading the horse. Uh, I see I'm going in the wrong order, but that's okay. Piat, number five. Visti, okay, we're taking by vehicle. Poezd, vizyot neft, storenu Moskvy. The train is hauling, 
right? It's conveying by vehicle oil in the direction of Moscow. Back to number two, Nisti to carry again. Where are you taking these chairs? Okay, we see someone, they're on their way. We could say that the, the Ijosh, right? You're going, you're on your way by foot. And where are you carrying those chairs? Kudati nisyosh etistulia. Okay, another leading verb. I'm leading the children to school, right? I'm taking them to school. And note here that we're not, uh, note how clear the Russian is, right? If we say in English, I'm taking the kids to school, it's not quite clear, right? We would, I guess we'd assume by car, but we could be walking them to school, right? It just depends. But in Russian, we make that distinction very clearly. Yasichas vidu ditiev shkolo means I'm leading them there on foot. Uh, number six, yasichas vizu ditiev shkolo, that means I'm taking them there by car, I'm conveying them by vehicle. Okay, uh, let's make some uh, past tense forms, right? And these are the kind of tricky ones. Kudau nisiot etu knigu, where is he taking this book? Okay, let's say, where was he taking the book? Kudau nios etu knigu. Dva, kuda na vidyot svojevo druga? Where is she taking her friend? Right, they're on their way somewhere. Where is she taking her friend? Past tense, kuda na vila svojevo druga? Number three, muy časte noisim babushkie chlieb. Okay, this is the indeterminate, right? We often take uh, bread to grandma. We would often take bread to grandma, right? Repeated round trips in the past. That would be muy časte nasili babushkie chlieb. Where are you leading me? Where are you taking me to? Right? We're on our way somewhere. I want to know where. Okay, past tense. Where were you leading me? That would be Kudati Minya Vyol. Piet, I'm taking you where you need to be, right? Where you need to go. Or sorry, we're taking you. Vidyom Tibiatuda Kudanada. We're taking you where you need to go. Okay, past tense. We were taking you. We were on our way leading you. Vili, muy vili tibia tuda kuda nada. Sheist, kuda vidyot et daroga. Where does this road lead? To where does this road lead? Kuda vila et daroga. We mean, where did the road lead? Siam, pachimu on voisi tibia na vagzal. Why is he always driving you to the train station? Now, here, by the way, it's clear that this is a repeated, a repeated activity. It's very clear here because we're using. Uh, Vizit, right, for, it's a present, te- present tense, so if we said vizio, that would make clear that it's a one, a one way, you know, a one-time trip. Okay, anyway, why did he used to t- drive you to the train station? Repeated round trips. Pachimu and vizil tibiana vagzal, right, by vehicle, or, or he's taking us by vehicle. Voisim, she's carrying, is she taking a cake to her brother? Ananisio tor svaimu bratu. Okay, past tense. Ananisla tur svaimu bratu. Was she carrying cake to her brother? Uh, by the way, based on if we shifted the intonation of that question, we could change the point of the question, right? So there are actual there are actually several ways you could read that, at least three. Uh, but anyway, Djevic, at kuda vizut blank. Let's see, at the gromli stole. Okay, so they're they're. Hauling, they're taking by vehicle, and what are they taking? A, a huge table. Okay, so where from are they taking by vehicle this huge table? They're underway by vehicle. Uh, past tense would be atkuda vizli at the dagromni stol, right? Where were they taking this huge table by vehicle? Okay, Djesic, my padruga just avoided me nyav teater. She often takes me to the theater. Repeated round trips, right? Okay, past tense, that would be my padruga just of ideala. She would often take me or lead me on round trips to the theater. Okay, uh, so uh, let's try to unpack some verbs here again, just using our, um, our old keywords, right? Remember for indeterminate, around or round trip is the keyword, and for uh, determinant, underway is the keyword. We could also draw little pictures. Kuda te idiosh? A što te nisiosh? Okay, now here we, we have both a verb of motion and a verb of conveyance, so we can see how those line up. These are both determinate, right? Where are you on your way to by foot? What are you carrying, right? What are you underway carrying, so to speak, if we unpack that? Number two, the, well, the answer, Iduna vichirinku nisubutilku vina. 
I'm underway by foot to a party. I'm going to a party and I'm underway carrying a bottle of wine, right? I'm taking a bottle of wine to the party. Three, on всегда носит джинсы на работу. He always wears jeans to work. Okay, this is indeterminate, and this is that special meaning. It means simply to wear. Now, we could interpret that literally, right? He he makes round trips carrying jeans to work. He, right, he's, he's To wear jeans is to carry them on your person, so to speak. But again, that's kind of a special uh, meaning. Четыре, куда ты шел вчера? Where were you on your way to yesterday, right? Where were you headed on foot? Я вел друга в музей. I was underway leading my friend to the museum, right? We were on our way to the museum. I was leading him. I was taking him. Пять. Я его часто вожу в музей, когда он в Москве. I often lead him to the museum when he's in Moscow. Okay, well, that's multiple round trips, right, uh, for leading. Шесть. Когда она везла меня домой, мы попали в аварию. Okay, that's underway. So when, when she was underway driving me home, right? She was driving me home. We were underway when we got caught in an accident. We got into an accident. Сем, она часто возила меня домой. She would often drive me home, right? That's the multiple round trip. Again, this is the breakdown number four, a strongly implied round trip, even though presumably she's dropping you at, at your home and then driving back herself. So that's breakdown number four. Um, anyway, uh, let's supply a verb based on context. Когда он идет в тренажерный зал, он всегда блэнк чистую одежду. Okay, again, we can match these uh, conveyance verbs up with the motion verb, right? Он идет. So when he goes to the uh, gym, and here we're treating, we're using идет, so this is literally repeated one-way motion, right? When, it, when he's on his way to the gym, he always carries clean clothes. Right, несет. Он всегда несет чистую одежду. Determinant. Two, когда он ездил в Россию, он всегда blank американская виски. Uh, let's see, when he would make round trips to Russia, right? Repeated trips in the past, when he would go to Russia, he would always take American whiskey. Okay, now if he's going to Russia, there's going to be a vehicle involved, so we, we need to say here, Vizil. Он всегда Vizil американская виски. And again, that lines up with the indeterminate verb yezdil. Uh, whiskey, people often ask me, what's a good uh, present to take to Russia? And uh, whiskey is a pretty good uh, thing because almost everyone will, will like it. And, uh, you know, it's something kind of distinctly American, I guess. Like being from Tennessee, I always take uh, Jack Daniels, uh, you know, a nice, nice bottle of Jack Daniels. And uh, it's always appreciated. Okay, number three, kudam uh, idiom, where are we going, right? Again, we're underway, on foot, or whatever. Kudatimina vidyosh, right? Where are you taking me to? Again, we're underway. Kudatimina vidyosh. And the answer, I'm taking you to a club. Yev klub tibia vidu, vidu, right? I'm underway leading you to a club. Chitiri, maya padruga, blank minya po moskvia. Muit sili din chadili pagurdu. Okay, again, look at, for the context here. Chadili is our verb of motion. So we're, we're talking about we were walking around all day. We, we were walking around the city all day. Chadili. Okay, and in the meantime, she was showing me around Moscow. Maya padruga vadila minya po moskvia. She was leading me around the city. Piat, kajde utra. Every day at eight, I go to class. Okay, this is repeated one way, a repeated one way trip, and uh, here we are being sort of literal about it. We're using do the determinant. Okay, and let's say Yasigda saboy rukzak. I always carry with me my backpack. On repeated one way trips, determinant nisu. Chase, do you not know where this road leads? This street leads. Не знаешь, куда ведет эта улица? Мы уже целый час по ней идем. Right, we are already underway on foot along this street for an hour, right? And we're asking, where is it leading? Where does it lead? And both verbs here are determinate, right? Идем, ведет. Okay, by the way, if you're talking about where a road leads, that's a path. So, you know, you, you, wouldn't, you would never use vadit in that sense, right? Where does the path lead? That would always be a determinate verb. Сем, когда я ее видел на улице, она шла на вокзал. When I saw, when I spotted her on the street, 
she in the street, she was on her way to the train station by foot, an ashla. She was carrying an, a suitcase, a nanisla chimadan, again determinate. Voice him, Tividio Borrio, have you seen Borria? Kudaun Yechel, where was he on his way to? Right? Okay, it seems like he was on a trip somewhere. He was taking a vehicle specifically and uh, he was driving or whatever. On blank Tavar Narena, sounds like he was hauling some goods to the market. On Vios Tavar Narenak, when you vote Rabota, that's he's got that's his job. Da on Vies Jin Yezdit Pagorudu e blank Tavar. Okay, so he drives around the city all day, right? Yezdit, round trips by vehicle, and he's taking goods, products. Voizit, on voizit, on yezit pagordu e voizit tavar. Okay, number one, muy tagdoga shliv chera. Okay, we have to be careful here, uh, again, just to interpret the, the situation clearly. We have a determinate verb, right? So someone's talking about how they were on their way by foot for such a long time yesterday. Well, okay, so they were headed somewhere and it took them forever. And they say, well, what were they doing? We were taking a, we were carrying a gift for mom or we were taking her a present. Okay, so again, the key here is to, you know, whatever, however we interpret the context, we need a verb that's going to match up with shli. Right, so we can't say something like nasili. We've got to use a determinate verb of conveyance, right? And that would be here nisli. We, we were on our way carrying a present for mom. Uh, number two, on chas chadil e blank svayusabako paparku. Okay, so we walked around for an hour, right? Indeterminate. He was walking around the park for an hour and leading his dog, right? Vajil svayusabako. Indeterminate verbs. Number three, Kudaun Yechel Chira. Where was he on his way to yesterday? Again, by vehicle, right? And we say, well, he was taking me to the airport. Again, this, this is a determinate verb, Yechel. The equivalent here would be uh, Vios, right? He was driving me to the airport, one way determinate uh, motion. Chitiri, Kagda Idun Alexiu, Ya blank, Uchebnik Vruksakia. When I go to, the le- to a lecture, I um, carry my textbook in a backpack. Okay, so repeated one-way trips, right? When I'm on my way to the lecture, I'm always carrying my um, textbook in a backpack. Ya nisu uchebnik vruksakia, determinant. Piat, ana yezdjet i blank pizzo pagordu. Sounds like she's delivering pizza. Ana yezdjet i vozjet, right? Multiple round trips, indeterminate motion, right? She's all over town. We are going to a restaurant. We're on our way there. Our friend is taking us there, right? Underway. Okay, what about perfective verbs of convenience? Now, these, these aren't too common. We already talked about it, really. Uh, remember, the key is that they're perfective, right? They're perfective especially, meaning they can only refer to a single, right? A one-time action, a one-time trip. Uh, and uh, they're used especially for one-time trips in the future, right? Just like motion verb, as we discussed the other day. Also notice in terms of conjugation that these are exactly like the determinate forms. We just had po in front, right? So we're just adding po, that prefix, but as with the verbs in motion, we're declining, we're conjugating it in exactly the same way. So for example, we get punisu, punisiosh, punisiot, and then in the past tense, panios, punisla, punislo, etc., Okay, and again, if we use our keyword and our pictograms, we can we can envision or imagine very clearly or unpack what this verb is telling us. For example, punisu means to set off carrying. Just as paiti means to set off walking, punisu means to set off carrying. And so you get this in situations like, um, for example, chimadan shijoli, the suitcase is heavy. Well, why don't I take it for you, right? Why don't I set off carrying it? Right? Davaya punisu. Right? The teacher took the boy by the hand and led him off down the hallway. Okay, so they're standing still. She takes him by the hand and off they go. She sets off leading him down the hallway. Okay, so uh, let's just look at a few examples and pick the right uh, infinitive and then translate. When we set out on foot for the train station, my friend carried the suitcase for me. Okay, we're setting out here. And again, we have this correspondence between a verb of motion and a verb of conveyance. 
Where are we going? What are we taking? Those forms are going to mirror each other. Right? So this will be Punisti. Uh, right? Когда мы пошли на вокзал, мой друг понес чемодан для меня. Right? He, he понес, we set off, we, we пошли, and the friend понес, he set off carrying. Number two, where was he running to this morning? Okay, sounds like he was underway running. And why was he carrying champagne? An interesting scenario. Okay, so this is going to be determinate, right? We're going to use nisti, right? He was on his way carrying champagne as he was running on his way somewhere. So, kuda on bijal sivonye utram, right? Where was he running this morning? I pochimu on nios champanskaya. Why was he underway carrying champagne? Number three, my mom would always take us with her when she went to the theater. Okay, multiple round trips in the past. And this is going to be vaidit. Mom всегда водила нас с собой, когда она ходила в театр. Right, again, multiple round trips indeterminate. Четыре, где станция? Where's the station? Uh, we've been walking for an hour already. Could be vagzal, a train station, or a stancia would be a subway station. We've been walking for an hour already. I've been carrying the suitcase for an hour. Okay, sounds like we're on our way to the station. We're looking for it. This is going to be determinate, right? Мы шли уже час. Мы уже час. Actually, I misspoke a little bit. We've been walking. Okay, so this is an important point we've discussed before. This is still ongoing, right? We've been doing it for an hour, and we're still doing it. That means that it's present tense in Russian, right? We don't have a perfective tense in Russian we can choose. So this will be мы уже целый час, or мы уже час идем, right? Literally, we are walking for an hour already. I've been carrying this suitcase for an hour. Я час несу этот чемодан. Again, present tense verbs because the, the action is still ongoing, and we're underway, so we get determinate verbs. The truck goes to Moscow every morning and transports fresh milk. Okay, this is a little truck. It's not a big. It's not a train or something. So we're not going to get that breakdown. Uh, we would say Grusavik Yezdit Vmaskvu Kajde Utra Ivozich Svjezhe Malako. Right again here we're this is breakdown number four basically. The idea of the round trip is taking over. Right, the truck goes to Moscow and comes back every day. It takes the fresh milk and leaves it in Moscow, but again, because of the round trip idea, we would probably use Voizid here. Okay. Uh, finally, one quick um, idiom. Uh, the verb for conveyance by vehicle can be used subjectlessly in subjectless constructions with a different meaning. It means to be lucky, right? So if we use that subjectlessly with the dative case, it means that someone is lucky. And I'm not sure how to interpret this idiom, but it, it means something like things are going, I like to th think of it as Things are going as if on wheels, right? As if on vehicle, meaning it's very easy. There's no, you don't have to work. You don't have to carry anything yourself. Things are just kind of rolling along for you. You're lucky. Okay, so here are a few examples. And look at the verbs here. Remember, in a subjectless expression, the verb, uh, well, two things. Okay, so we've been over this a million times, but it's so important. If we have a subjectless expression, it means we have no subject. That's number one. So the verb, if, if there is a verb, is not going to agree with the subject, right? There is no subject. So the second thing to remember is that the subjectless verb will always appear in a neuter singular form. And you can see that clearly here, especially in these past tense forms. Tibia povislo means you got lucky. Okay, that's perfected. That means you got lucky once. You move sigda vizio, that's present tense. He's always lucky. Uh, you move sigda vizlo, that's past tense repeatedly, right? It's it's imperfective. He always got lucky. He was always lucky. Maybe we'll get lucky, right? One time future instance of being lucky. Okay, so that's a very common idiom, and it, I would really recommend le learning that for sure. Uh, it's, you know, extremely common. Maybe a little bit tricky, and you know, actually, if you want to kind of nail down how a subjectless expression works, especially one that you can use constantly in everyday speech. This is a really good one to look at. Uh, so again, just look over these examples and you see there is no subject because there's no nominative case, right? The nouns and pronouns are all going to be dative. And then the form of the verb itself always looks like a neuter singular, right? It's as if the subject were anoa, even though even that is not the subject, right? There is no anoa. It's, it has no subject at all. But again, it looks like it has a neuter singular subject.
Okay, so that's it. Some some slightly complicated uh, stuff today. But anyway, uh, next time we're going to introduce prefixed verbs of motion. Again, we're going to do kind of a soft introduction to that before really looking at it, looking at it in depth in book three. Uh, anyway, until then, do svidanya tavarishi, v periodk novim pabjadom.